right here are the most valuable things we own right now. These That's, are the tickets to our bags. The tickets to our lives. Tickets to everything. <laughs> that we own. <laughs> so as soon as you walk out of the Cologne main train station, you walk right into this beauty, this Gothic cathedral known as the Cologne Dome or the Cologne Cathedral. Look at this cathedral. This is actually the largest or the tallest cathedral in the world. It's truly amazing that when you're coming into the city via train, this is literally the first thing you see. What an amazing introduction to the city. The facade on this cathedral is so unique. It's almost like it looks burnt, but it's like covered in this black. I don't know, it almost looks like soot. It's so unique, I haven't seen anything like this. It's definitely very imposing, very striking. It just kind of stands out over everything else around here. And it was heavily bombed in World War II and then also had uh, a few instances with fire. So I would assume that's why it still kind of looks like that a little bit. Um, but it also just might be the way it was designed too because it has been rebuilt and rebuilt and rebuilt so many different times But it's truly incredible just to think of like how much it's been through and for it to still be standing here and still be so striking and imposing It's kind of inspiring like it's just it's literally unbreakable and it's been the symbol of Cologne for so long and through so many different things World War II absolutely decimated this city so it's really really nice to see it flourishing now. Now we've seen a lot of churches on this trip so far, but we haven't really gone into many. So I don't know if we can pass this up. We have to go in. Yeah, we have to check out the interior. A lot of times it's closed and a lot of times, especially with COVID and everything, we've been running into that, but it looks like they're letting people in. So let's go check it out. So cool. It's so cold. The size of the church is actually more impressive on the inside than the outside. Even though, like when you look at it, you can see how tall it is. Like when you see how wide it is too. I mean, this is just a gigantic structure. All four corners of the church are just full of these windows with... Stained glass? Stained glass. Oh my gosh. Paintings. They're so beautiful. Between St. Paul's Cathedral in London, St. Patrick's in New York, and then the one in Milan, this might be the most impressive, just because of the sheer size of it. And then the stained glass windows are so incredible. That is truly one of the most beautiful places I've ever been in. So as we're walking over to the Altstadt, I just want to talk a little bit about train travel here in Germany, because it is definitely one of the better countries we've been to as far as train travel. The actual trains themselves are very clean, very on time. Always actually. Always on time. Ri ridiculously <laughs> on time. And they go literally everywhere. And that includes the towns and the suburbs outside of the main cities. So we were staying in Hilden, which is just a little bit outside of Dusseldorf. But to get to Cologne, it's very easy to just go up to Dusseldorf and then come down here. It's like a 20 minute train ride from Dusseldorf to Cologne. I, I just can't get over how close those cities are because they're both very large cities. It's not like they're, you know, small places at all. Right. I think we're kind of blown away with the accessibility between all the towns in this region. We're even going to another place tonight called Bonn, which is just south of here, and that's going to be like a 15 minute train ride. So within an hour, you can get to all three of these cities. So we are in the Altstadt, or the old town of Cologne right now, and we're going to go see the Gross St. Martin's Church. It doesn't, it's not gross, it's gross, like big in German. This is so cool though, it's like all cobblestone streets, it's right by the river, and all of the streets are so narrow, it's all just restaurants and bars. So I know we just entered the Altstadt, but so far do you have any uh, comparisons between the Dusseldorf Altstadt and the Cologne Altstadt? Well, it's a lot bigger and I think the, the roads I think are a little bit narrower, which kind of makes it a little bit more cozy and uh, compact, I think. Kind of feel a little more lost in it because yeah. of the size of the buildings. Like you can't see really anywhere until you get to the river. It feels so cool. It feels so, so cool here. Feels Gosh. like a different time period. Oh, here are my buildings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> These are the cutest houses I've seen. They're so narrow. They've got like five or six levels. Ooh. I want to move in. <laughs> There's the beautiful backdrop. We got the picture finally. That was well worth it. Now more of Cologne. <laughs> We just stopped at Zoom Prince's bra house to have my first 
course. One of the most unique aspects of this region of the country is the fierce competition between Cologne and Dusseldorf when it comes to beer. Both of these cities have their own style of beer. We tried Alt in Dusseldorf. This one here is the Gothel Kolsch. And right off the bat, I'm loving this color. I'm usually a Pilsner lager type girl. So I have high expectations for this. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I mean, this is just my type of beer, you know? It's very light, it's got a good bite. It's not very um, overpowerful with the afterbite. It's just very smooth. Every time we were in Dusseldorf, walking around, looking at the different beers that all these different places had to offer, a lot of them being breweries, especially in the Altstadt too, it was Alt, Alt and only Alt. We did not see really any Kolsch besides like a little bit outside of the city, but in Dusseldorf, they're very proud of the fact that this style of beer is what they serve. It's a little bit darker and um, a little bit heavier than Kolsch, but here in Cologne, it's the exact opposite. Everywhere you go, you're gonna see Kolsch advertised on all of the uh, different places, and that's because it comes from Cologne. It can't be considered Kolsch unless it's brewed in Cologne. So you may have seen Kolsch in an American bar or somewhere else in the world. They do serve it and they do you know, export it to all places of, of the world, but it has to be brewed here in Cologne to be considered Kolsch. It's hard for me to pick between these two because they're just so different. Like the Alt, it has a very specific aftertaste and the kind of caramel color that it comes with is really, really appealing. This one's more of like a golden beer that you're gonna see like a lager or like a pilsner, but it also has this very full flavor. So even though a lot of people consider it like a light beer, um, it, it is full of flavor too. So like Alt, Kolsch is also served in these 0.2 or 0.3 liter little bottles. And again, they do the same thing, take from your coaster, see how many you've got. I think the most diplomatic answer to this great debate is drink Kolsch when you're in Cologne, drink Alt when you're in Dusseldorf. I guess you don't have much of a choice, really. If you ordered Alt here, you probably would be asked to leave. <laughs> a few people that I've told I'm going to Cologne, uh, Cologne, Germany, they said, isn't Cologne in France? That just seems to be what everyone thinks. Okay. And it's probably because of the product Eau de Cologne, or male perfume. Well, guess what? That actually does come from here. That does come from Cologne, Germany. Cologne has been part of France and part of Germany. The French-German border has been changed a lot throughout the years. Obviously, there's been a lot of fighting between the two countries. There are several famous chocolate companies that are based here in Germany. We've got Melka and Rittersport, all fabulous types of chocolatiers. I know Belgium and Switzerland are typically what people think about when they think about chocolate, but here in Germany, there is tremendous chocolate right here. The museum here is sponsored by Lindt, and as you can see, there's a chocolate Easter bunny because it's close to Easter. So I think it should be quite festive and quite fun. Hot off the press. Mmm, milk chocolate. Is it still melted? Yeah. So good. We learned a lot about where chocolate comes from, how it's spread across the world, and there's actually like a mini like production plant in there that we got to see how the chocolate is poured, pressed, and packaged. I really liked how it was a museum in that it kind of explained the process of how chocolate is made and everything and kind of gave you a step-by-step -step of that. But then it's also like an active uh, factory. Like yeah. they actually make chocolate here Absolutely. and distribute chocolate from here. So you kind of get to see it live. So the street we're gonna go to is called Achener Street. Achener Street. And that is like where all the fun bars are. But before we go, there's one more pit attraction, you know, one more pit stop we have to see before we do that. So the Han Gate is this really cool medieval structure that's kind of right in the middle of the food and restaurant district here in Cologne. 
there's like a food truck area right behind it so that's what we just walked through so you get you know a little food on the go and then you walk through that awesome gate as we just did imagine this beautiful looking structure in your town or city america could never there's stuff here that you just don't see over there i feel like that's why we love to see medieval things oh my gosh yeah and then after the han gate you walk right into achener strasse which is where the party begins or ends. Or ends. So something that we've had a few times off camera, but something that we haven't actually talked about in the channel yet, is Donor. So Donor is really big in Germany, and really all over Europe we've noticed it started to grow. Uh, it's from Turkish origin, so there are a lot of Turkish immigrants here in uh, Germany after the war looking for work. This just became like a very specific community, and Donor just took off. So Donor is like, even though it is technically Turkish, it's really, really big in Germany. It's almost part of German cuisine. Also, with Donor, you usually have Iran, which is like a salty yogurt drink. How this is put together, it's put inside this almost kind of ciabatta roll, and the Donor itself is like this shaved meat. So, mmm, really good. It's like what you consider a gyro. So then on top of the Donor meat, you have tzatziki sauce and cabbage. Uh, usually it's red cabbage, they have some regular cabbage in here as well. Truly one of my favorite things. Usually it's more of like a fast food kind of thing, but this is more of a sit down place. Let's dig in. Mm. It's so good. It's one of my favorite things. And what's really amazing is like, this is the main after bar food here in Europe. Like you're pretty much gonna only see donor and you know, maybe some fries and some things like that. But Donor is what you get after the bar. And in the US, we don't have donor places anywhere. So if anyone's looking for a million dollar idea, open up a donor place near like a street with a lot of bars in the US. Been an eventful day. We've had some Kolsch. We've walked pretty much everywhere in the city. We're dead tired. A guy tries to steal the camera. <laughs> I think it's all worked out how it's supposed to because we've ended up right here with the sunset coming down over the cathedral. I can't state it enough. This is truly one of the most beautiful cathedrals I've ever seen. Would you agree? Yes, I would totally agree. It's so unique, it's striking, it's different, it stands out. It's one that you will remember for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. 